This lecture six is a very uh, historical uh, lesson. Okay. Now, what we call uh, this the Jerusalem Council, Jerusalem Council, which is a very well known uh, event uh, in the early church history. Okay, so you should be familiar with this uh, council story and the how this council uh, opened and how the conclusion uh, was made out of the council, okay, which is so important. Uh, so I will give you historical background. Okay, now here you look at here. Uh, remember during the first missionary journey, okay, during the first missionary journey, which is 46 to 48. Remember that? You, when you teach, always review. It, okay, and they, they were ended at here in the southern Galatia. Remember that? And, and the first, okay, first, during the first missionary journey, they arrived in uh, Iconium and Derbe and Lystra. That is the last uh, place. From here, they return back to. Remember that? Lystra is the city where Timothy family uh, were. Okay, now. So this we call the Southern Galatia. This, uh, this is the Galatia, province of Galatia. Southern Galatia. So Southern Galatia means three cities located. It's Iconium, Derbe, and Lystra. Don't forget that. Southern Galatia. Okay. Then after the first missionary trip, okay, now uh, these Paul and Barnabas back to Antioch, that is AD 48. Okay, now of course, upon their uh, arrival back to Antioch, and Barnabas and Paul made a mission report to the Antioch church leaders and congregations made a special mission report. At the same time, these Christians in Iconium and Derbe and Lystra, the Christians there, okay, they, they expressed their opposition to Paul's teachings, uh, because Paul, when they were teaching there during the first missionary journey, Paul's theology was this, not observing the law required for salvation only, only by faith through the grace of our God. The nothing but faith in Jesus through the grace of our God. Okay? That is the only salvation requirement. That was a Paul's teaching. Okay? This is the important part here. Okay? So Paul when he was teaching these diaspora peoples around in Turkey here, okay, so these people got mixed up, very uh, much confused because these Jerusalem leaders taught them different doctrine on salvation, which was what? Observing the law plus 
Faith in Jesus by grace. Okay? Now, all of a sudden, when Paul arrived and teaching them, teaching them different salvation requirement. Okay? Putting not much important on the part of the Mosaic law. So these people here, Iconium, Derber, and Lystra especially, these people reported Jerusalem leaders about Paul's wrong teachings against their teachings. Okay? So now Jerusalem leaders got very much, I would say, dissatisfied with Paul's ministries and his teachings. So those leaders in Jerusalem, along with other Christians in Jerusalem, leaders, uh, became very much angry at Paul's teachings and Barnabas' teachings. So, so these leaders in Jerusalem went up to visit Antioch. What well, this is Antioch, okay? To to confront with Paul and Barnabas. Okay? This is what they some men from Judea, means Jerusalem, came to Antioch, blaming Paul and Barnabas. Okay? We heard from they said our former church members in Turkey, when means southern Galatia. What other city's name? Iconium, Derbe, and Theatra. Okay. That you taught them no need of circumcision. See, this is the issue. Okay. Under the Mosaic law, in order to be saved, you ought to be circumcised, okay, for salvation. But now Paul all of a sudden came to visit us, telling them, you don't need to be circumcised to be saved. So they were confused. That's why they went to visit Jerusalem, reported what the Paul said. Okay? And these people said, okay, you go up to Antioch and you discuss with the Paul who just came back from first missionary journey. So the Bible said, this brought sharp dispute between the Paul and Barnabas and the Men from Judea and Antioch church leaders, remember those remaining three leaders, Simeon, Manaen, remember those people? Antioch church leaders could not resolve this problem. So what was the problem? Mosaic law obedient, okay? Observing the Mosaic law, which now here in special, in particular, in circumcision issues, okay, for salvation requirement, okay. And Antioch church leaders, to solve this problem, okay, decided to send Paul and Barnabas along with some other believers in Antioch, okay, to see you go down to Jerusalem. And to you meet apostles and elders, apostles and elders in Jerusalem to solve this problem. Which is said, Acts chapter 15. See, Acts chapter 15 is the chapter, okay, dealing with Jerusalem council. So it's a very famous chapter. Acts chapter 15 is a very famous chapter. And also this is very much the turning point 
in terms of establishing the doctrine of salvation in the early Jerusalem church. Okay, this doctrine, Jerusalem Council decision, became an official doctrine of salvation out of the discussions. That's why I was I would say it is very important council. Okay. Now, they means Paul and Barnabas finally arrived at Jerusalem to have a discussions over this issue. And Jerusalem leaders, Bible said, gave them a big welcome. Okay. And Paul and Barnabas also reported them, the leaders, their mission trip. See? First missionary trip. So now Peter, John, and James, all the, you know, Andrews, all the leaders were sitting and listened to the missionary report. Okay. And all of a sudden, some of the leaders and elders in Jerusalem church, whose background was, okay, a Pharisees, Pharisees, although they were Christians, okay, still they belong to the Pharisees community, <clears throat> mixed up Christian community plus Jewish community, Pharisees community, <clears throat> okay, they stood up and, and pointing to Paul's and Barnabas by saying that you, you preach the wrong gospel. You preach the wrong gospel. He said, they said, Gentiles must be circumcised. Okay? They have to obey Mosaic law in order to be saved. So now you, Paul and Barnabas, particularly you, Paul, You've been teaching wrong doctrine on salvation. It was a big dispute. An argument happened in Jerusalem. The Bible said this. They had a long discussions over this matter. Long discussions over this matter. You see, that was the, that was the intention of the Holy Spirit. Okay? After the long discussions over this matter all of, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit inspired Peter because Peter was the top leader okay? Peter and James showed the top leadership in this council now Peter first got touched by the Holy Spirit he addressed this ladies and gentlemen as I have heard from Paul's uh, theology on doctrine of salvation, I am 100% sure that Paul was right. Gentiles, no need of circumcision. Okay? It was a very historical moment. Peter, who happened to be the top leader along with James, Okay, officially declared the new doctrine of salvation. Okay, say, no need of circumcision. Because we Christians, Paul said, Peter said, we Christians, we already got purified by heart, by faith. So our heart already by the faith in Jesus, purified. No need for additional requirement which calls circumcision. Okay? So, Peter said that, do not try to test our God. He said that. That's a powerful message. If you, you Pharisees, Christians, if you require Circumcision for salvation 
then you are testing our God. Peter said that, okay? And then he said this, Peter said, we, we, Christians, Jewish Christians, okay? We, we Jewish Christians like Jews, Gentiles also are saved through the grace of our Lord Jesus by faith. Because we, we Jewish Christians now, we, we became Christians. We, we were saved by faith through grace, not by the way of circumcision. Okay? Although we, we, we are circumcised, but circumcision was not the requirement for salvation. So we, see, let us apply this principle to Gentiles as well. Gentiles do not need a circumcision. So everybody was touched by the Holy Spirit as Peter addressed and making a new revelation on this doctrine of salvation. And the Holy Spirit challenged Peter, the James, upon Peter's address. Official top leader was who? James, brother of Jesus. Okay? And James has to confirm what Peter said. Okay? Our Christian community, you know, works this way. God always inspires top leader to make official decision. Okay? So other disciples were so quiet. So James declared the official decision. The Holy Spirit inspired him. So there were how many points? One, two, okay? And there is a requirement what James said. You see, very much they compromise to make Jews and Gentiles digest, accept, okay? Because those Jewish people, especially the Pharisees, got angry at, you know, uh, this decision. But by the help of the Holy Spirit, as James declared kind of a compromising decision to make both Jews and Gentiles happy. Okay? This is the way God works. Here, here James said this, we should not make it difficult for Gentiles who are turning to our God. In other words, don't put additional requirement to the Gentile Christians who are now converting to Christianity. Okay? That's too heavy for them. Okay? And also, instead of, instead of, James here, the very James was, it, God uses this, this, we, this principle, we have to learn that. We should write them Telling them, in other words, that this is a written, written official statement is very, very important. And James said this, now, I'm going to give you certain requirement for, a biblical requirement for salvation with an exception of some of the items. Okay? So I will we will write down all these decisions in a paper, okay, and let Paul and Barnabas carry this to the mission field and to the entire Turkish you know, communities there. So written, written is important, not verbally. Are you with me? Written. So there was an exception part right here. And okay, now, let me repeat again. Now, from this time on, 
No need of circumcision for salvation. No need of observing the Mosaic law. Okay? But James said, within some exceptions, there are four exceptions to make the Jewish, especially those Pharisees, Jewish Christians, to make them satisfied. This is, this is abstain. You see, telling abstain means, abstain means what? Abstains from, that means don't do this. In a, in a simple sentence, okay? Abstain from means do not do this. There's, a, there's the condition there, you see? Do not abstain from, do not eat food polluted by idols. That's the first condition. In other words, that some non-Christians, okay, they sacrifice uh, in their idol worship and they presented food, okay. When you, when you discover those foods were, is, you know, came in, coming out of that kind of uh, Gentile uh, and our sacrificial offerings, don't eat it. That's the. Are you with me? Don't eat those food. That's a condition. Who made this condition? James. Okay. And the second condition is, do not have a sexual immorality. It's very general condition. Okay. And third condition is that, do not eat a meat, animal meat. Okay. Who were killed, strangled. Strangled means, you know, strangled, okay? Yeah. Twist the neck like that. Do not eat any animal meat who were killed by strangled. And number four, do not eat, do not drink blood. Okay? So these are. These are kind of um, uh, special requirement for salvation to make who happy? To make those Pharisees and law abiding, mosaic law abiding, so called Judaism background Christians. So these are not. I would say James did not put this one into salvation requirement. But this one, he considered it as an ethical and moral requirement, not necessary for the salvation. Okay? So Paul accepted it. Because Paul was very strong on what? Faith by grace. Okay? Nothing but, there's no other requirement. Faith in Jesus by grace. That is Paul's salvation doctrine and requirement. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the faith in Jesus by grace. Okay? So, James, Holy Spirit, just inspired James. James, make everybody happy. You just suggest some of the unnecessary requirement to make them happy with these four conditions. It's kind of ethical and moral requirement for salvation. So, this council members, everybody were happy with Peter and James' advice. Isn't it wonderful? Okay? So they, they decided to write an official letter. It's always important because of Paul insisted upon them. 
Would you write it down on a paper? So let me carry this. So that no objections from your disciples in Turkey, uh, you know, area, challenging my teachings. So please write it down, this official decision, so that I can carry this and I can tell them that I am authorized to teach the faith alone will be the salvation requirement by you. So they wrote down official letter and also they means this Jerusalem people, okay? They appointed two delegates. Their name is Judas and Silas. We call Silas or is English speaking people is Silas, okay, but especially Silas, okay. They in Acts fifteen thirty two said they were prophets. Acts fifteen thirty two said they this Judas and Silas. Because this Jerusalem Council appointed these two prophets, Judas and Silas, Silas. Along with and give these two people to Paul and Barnabas, okay, to visit Antioch Church. So now they, they means Paul and Barnabas and Judas and Silas with the written letter, okay, they went to Antioch. Back, they arrived in Antioch Church and reported the decision and encouraged and strengthened Antioch people and those churches in the mission field. And after that, Judas and Silas back to Jerusalem. This story was written in Acts chapter 15, verses 12 through 35. It's a long story. But this long story is very crucial in determining the salvation requirement, which was officially declared by the top leaders. Peter and James, they were the top leaders, okay? Out of their leadership decision, Paul, okay, utilized, Paul make use of their decision in his future teachings in the mission field. This is an early church Historical event happened in Jerusalem Council. Are you with me? Therefore, let me repeat again. The decision made in the Jerusalem Council became what? A official requirement for salvation. Okay, uh, after some kind of struggles, okay, among the leaders, they came up with a official written doctrine. That written doctrine still in effect up to now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.